Let's move on to the story. Limpopo Health faces medical negligence claims to the value of 14 billion rand. The Vembe district has the highest number of claims at 500. But the department says some of the complaints are brought by unscrupulous people for money. It also says lawyers often inflate the amount being claimed. So let's discuss this now with Limpopo Health MEC Popi Ramatuba. MEC, thank you so much for your time this morning. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what is the status like when it comes to our healthcare facilities in the province. 14 billion rand of medical negligence claims is a no small fate. Um, how serious is the situation here? Uh, morning, Faith, and morning to all your viewers out there, and thank you for giving us this opportunity. Uh, what we are saying as a, as a department is that the, the 14 billion, we must look into it in the context that this is um, the, the entire contingent liability. It's it's all cases that have been lodged against the state, meaning within that 14 billion, there could be uh, cases that are genuine, wherein as a state and our healthcare professionals, we are found wanting. And that's why in such cases, we will follow a dispute resolution mechanism, which we have developed a system towards addressing that. But also, they must, we are also wanting to say some of these cases, when we look at it, you, you will realize that uh, these are cases where in, uh, sometimes families uh, just get approached by, by the lawyers. It, it could be on a social media. I'll give you a simple example. There was a story that was going on of a baby with a hydrocephalus. And, and this, this uh, uh, somebody saw it and probably approached the family. Now they are suing the state. And, and when our neonatologists look into the case and our neurosurgeon realized that the state has done everything, there, there, there are things that would happen uh, when we are delivering health care services and when we are giving birth, there are issues that uh, could be a gen genital, they could be congenital. But then the unfortunate thing is that when the public uh, does not know anything that does not go the way we would wish to, we always think that the state is at fault. We have also recently came across cases where a 17 year old in a special school has been uh, visited uh, by, by lawyers to come and want to, and they even said it was delivered in a hospital. Donald Fraser, when we go, into our records, we realize that that's not even true. So you can see there is also disparation amongst the lawyers. Maybe it's because the RAF has closed the taps. There is that disparation. I'm not against the law profession, but there's disparation to try to continue to use the healthcare department as a target because this challenge is not only affecting Limpopo. It is a global crisis. But if you look at South Africa, all our provinces, we are in serious trouble. If you look, go back to 2015, our former health minister, Dr. Mutalini, even called all role players, both in public and private, to try to address this issue. And both the Minister of Health, the Minister of Correctional Services, and Justice and Correctional Services are looking into the law reforms. Uh, there has been a, a, a papers that are out there. We've made our own a contribution because if we don't deal with this, uh, 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 that has become a threat to the delivery of LK in the country, yeah. we will find ourselves wanting. Well, MEC, let's not negate, and I take your point regarding how sometimes it could be lawyers that are trying to take advantage of the system uh, and finding it as a mechanism of making money. However, we can also cannot pretend that public sector health care is lacking in this country. Whether it's just in the Limpopo province or it is national, it is a fact. Uh, a public sector health care is something is sometimes these many people wanting. But 14 billion rand is, is a big number. The Embed District, for example, has reported the last. We've also got uh, Sikukune as well with uh, some cases. We've got Capricorn District with some cases as well. Uh, certainly, with that in mind, something needs to be done. I mean, you're making mention of one or two cases. I remember there was a case even last year about a woman who gave birth outside of a, of a clinic it was supposed to be, uh, that was supposed to be open for her. And there was a whole big mitigation around whether it's a 24-hour clinic, whether it's not a 24-hour clinic. Security was there. The woman ended up giving birth just outside of that clinic itself. So it says that in many instances, South Africans are left wanting when it comes to adequate service delivery.
to improve on this 14 billion rand so that we don't have a 14 billion rand case and lawyers that take, try to take advantage of the system, to your point, how do you improve the system? Can we accept that the system itself is flawed and that more can be done to improve? Uh, Faith, what we can reassure you is that we are the first people to uh, point out the shortcomings within the healthcare. Uh, and we do not want to blame a fund. We are also saying at the same time the attitude of our staff uh, in other areas where we do not have enough uh, staff. You find we are in a system where in there is moratorium on appointment of nurses. And even if you wish to run your clinics 24 hours, but if Treasury it's not giving you money to appoint those nurses, to do shift work because if you want a clinic to run 24 hours, you must have clinical nurse practitioners and midwives who will be able to run that clinic 24 hours. You can wish to open it 24 hours, but you can't run it with staff nurse or enrolled nurses. You need qualified midwives who will be able to assist those women when they are coming to deliver. You need reliable security that could be able to provide protection for those very same nurses, but also at the same time. We're saying as a department, what you need to do in, in those cases, they, like I've said earlier on, that 14 billion, what do we do? As long as you lodge a claim with us, we put it within that and we are the ones who talk, who would register it. If you look at, at the discrepancies of reporting in other provinces, for instance, we do, they don't give you the numbers of everybody who has reported. They will only talk about those cases that are now appearing but we do that so that we don't lose track it also assists us to look into the quality of care that we are providing in all our facilities yeah but and we see I, I take your point with that i take your point and just for the sake of time i do take your point that some of these cases need to be filtered down so that we can understand which cases are genuine and which cases are not genuine point taken but it goes back to around accountability. As the MEC who oversees all of this, who ensures that these, these hospitals do have enough capacity, that there's budget for the capacity, that the operating hours are being uh, dealt with, being able to integrate within the unions themselves, what are we taking accountability for? Because back again to my point, 14 billion is a large number, whether genuine or not. It's a large sum of number. So from an area and aspect of accountability, where are you seeing the areas where you can also improve from an oversight level, from a leadership level, right down to the level of the CEO that is appointed to be overseeing those hospitals? Uh, the responsibility of the executive authority together with the accounting officer and the term management is to make sure that when Treasury allocates you that 22 billion budget, you then spread it accordingly and put priorities. Now, amongst tops of the list in terms of our priority is the women, maternal and child health care. But we, we, we need to, unfortunately, we will not have enough time. But 72% of our budget, actually, when we started, we were at 80%. We spend on compensation, the salaries for our staff, leaving you with, a, a, when we started, it was 26%. Now at least we've come down, it, you, are, we are, you are left with only 28% that you must use towards buying the oxygen, towards buying the equipment, fixing. So that's where we are. At the end of the day, it still goes back to the underfunding that is there within the public health system. But we're not folding our arms and, 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 and only blame them. We know other cases are as a result of negligence amongst our staff, the incompetency, which we have put up a system. We've got the maternal and child health care committee in the province, which every single maternal death get presented even to me and the HOD. And we look into that with our advisory body. If a doctor or a midwife is found wanting, we're also putting up system for corrective measures and that accountability. But we must also bear in mind that the issues of resources here, it's also playing a major role. The second issue that we do is that we need to start educating the public, which we are doing when a, 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 a woman is pregnant. That's why we insist that at 20 weeks, you must go and book for the clinic so that when you are booking at the clinic, 
The midwife will advise you in that record, the clinic card, you are asked, where do you plan to deliver your baby? And if you choose a clinic that doesn't operate 24 hours, you are advised there and then. We even ask you, should you go into premature labor? What mode of transport do you have? We do those planning. Unfortunately, our women are still not booking for antenatal, such that when the time to deliver comes, they are found also having challenges to go to a clinic that because of resources, it's not running 24 hours. So I get your point. Our turnaround strategy, which we presented to SCOPA, it's there. We are implementing it. And also, we have got a team that is looking at all these single cases, which comprises of the, the currently what we've done, our radiologist, Dr. Slangu, who is also an advocate, qualified lawyer. We have withdrawn him from clinical section to show how serious we are. He is now dealing with these cases. He has put a team of different specialists. Yeah. We are also working with the National Department to yeah. really and look into this. I, is I, the unfortunately, I would love to continue agent. with this conversation, but we have to leave it here for, uh, for now. Uh, the Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, just giving us a clarity, perhaps, regarding uh, what's the story with this 14 billion rand in medical negligence claims.